Hello everybody, and welcome to another video. Um, real quick, we're going to get into some fragrances. They're already unboxed. If you want to see that video of me unboxing them, video right before this will show it. Also, I thought it'd be fun if we did a bit of an interactive video. Uh, let me know what your first cologne is. Let's do this together. So, my first colognes. This is probably not everything, but it's everything that I could think of. I went and I bought them all back up and I thought it'd be fun if we tried them together and try to relive some nostalgia and some probably cringe storytelling along the way. Let's get it. So, the first one, the first one, if you've seen my other cologne videos, you know this, Michael Jordan. There are two of these, Michael Jordan and a Michael Jordan 23. Say dabbing. Ah. Um, this is probably the first cologne that I ever actually sampled, smelled. Um, this was my father's generic, stereotypical um, cologne. The man is far from a connoisseur, but he had this. It's like really fruity off the top and out, a little sweet, but it kind of just smells like a, um, like a body wash, um, real consistent with that, um, decent projection lasts long enough. I did just pick this up. This is the, um, 3.4 version and uh, I didn't even know they were still making it. But I came across this guy and didn't make it in time for the unboxing video, but I did buy it. So, um, part of being a child, uh, you don't have your own money, don't have the ability to purchase your own cologne, so you're at the mercy, uh, of parents or whoever else before you can get a job and because of that I used to get um, these like you know cologne sets that you can get on like Macy's or JC Penney's or something like that and this was one that I got that sort of my first signature scent and this is Blue Seduction by Antonio Banderas. It's, uh, Antonio Banderas is a designer that I still like. Um, I think his cologne, The Golden Secret, is, is great uh, for its value. They're cheap, um, but they're good. And, and this particular one, you know, these are the, the sets that come with the aftershave and I don't know why I needed that because I didn't even shave at the time but Blue Seduction is a gosh there we go Blue Seduction is a didn't even get anything from that ah, my nozzle's like broken <laughs> oh, let's try it again there we go. So Blue Seduction like a super perfumey um, flower base. When you spray it, it's just super floral, um, like a garden hydrangeas. You do get a little bit of like fruitiness, but it's just super, super perfumey and light. And I don't know, it's now when I when I went to Cologne, you know, you see how how you change through the years. Now, when I want a Cologne, I want something that has some some umph, you know, some some depth, some some girth to it. Uh, uh, and I definitely wouldn't look for that in it. But um, now, in 
Mondays. You know, I I don't go through my colognes. It's on rotation, so I don't polish off. Plus, you know, three or four sprays as much as you need. Uh, that though, I think I polished off three bottles. That was a lot, and because I love that fragrance so much. I bought this, or I got this, Seduction in Black. This is the version of uh, the cologne that is made for nighttime, for sensuals, um, for something that just has a little bit more depth, a little more flavor. Spray it up in the air. It's good. It has this aroma to it that's really pleasant, kind of like a bergamot, um, a discernible fruit up at the beginning, but as it sits and it dries, it actually dries really nice. It dries into this, um, I don't know, deeper woody sort of patchouli in the sense kind of fragrance and it's, it's nice I'm sure back in the day um, I thought I was quite the lady killer uh, with these things there was no doubt in my mind I probably bathed in these and that was probably rough so my father could not care less about fragrances my mother did but she didn't know anything about colognes so she used to go in and get these Bath and Body Works colognes like this. This is Noir, and I actually went into uh, Bath and Body Works because it's a full circle. I went in with my mother, I went in with my sisters, and now you go in with, you know, spouses, significant others, girlfriends. It's, you can't get away from it. But, Bath and Body Works makes these generic fragrances and you know they have a hundred thousand for, for ladies and like three for men and they still make this uh, it's good it's it's like super woody super masculine it's good honestly if you haven't like gone and put a nose on this it's pretty good but I used to get these, and they were they were hit or miss. Usually, I didn't like them, but uh, I didn't have to buy that. That is um, from the original, <laughs> the original gift. So, you can see how much I I enjoyed it, and I did, um, but not that much. Okay, now now we're getting into our uh, teen years and just dangerous enough to make money probably off of chores if I remember correctly and um, the first cologne that I ever bought was Cool Water by Davidoff, Davidoff, however you, you pronounce it and this is supposed to be a cologne inspired by however you want to say it by um, Green Irish Tweed by Creed. And um, I think it's a little too much. It stings my nostrils. It has a very alcohol fragrance. Uh, it's a little intense. Oh, yeah. I, I don't like it to me. It smells like um, mosquito repellent. But that's just me, uh, and that's something that I like to say too. And it's, I see people uh, that say, "Oh man, this cologne is great. This cologne is awful. It's all subjective." You know, you, you try to make a product obviously that is appealing to the masses, but uh, four point two ounce bottle, like eighteen bucks. So I was living high on the hog. Thought it was the coolest thing ever. Uh, next one. My father uh, got rid of the Michael Jordan 
and was given this cologne, which I actually really liked and ended up picking up a bottle myself. And it's David Beckham's Instinct. This was, I mean, you see a pattern, right? Michael Jordan, David Beckham. Um, these sports colognes, I'll just say, the sports colognes today either don't exist, they stop making them, or they suck. Um, this, they never used to. They used to be like the, you know, the Axe body sprays, and, and that's, that's kind of proof to a certain extent. If they sucked, Axe body spray wouldn't have done as good as it did. This is like the golden days of sports colognes, and I hate Prada's new sports cologne. Like, I do not like sports colognes with the exception of Layton, if you want to consider that a sports cologne. Um, very flowery, flowery, fruity. I mean, it's exactly what you'd think, like super heavy on the top notes, like bergamot and apple. Uh, and then in the mid notes, you have some woodiness. And as it dries, it gets super woody and musky. It's just good. It's just good. Uh, had to pick it up actually forgot that I used to wear it until I saw it and I was like yeah no I gotta pick this guy back up so that was a gift um, the next one I actually bought with my own money and it's the original bottle and it's Burberry for men and now let me tell you something. They don't make this anymore in this bottle. They've redesigned it a little bit. I think they still make it, but this is obviously my original and it looks terrible because it was also my uh, car cologne. <laughs> uh, it's purely here for nostalgia standpoint um and it's good you know my first real girlfriend i was wearing this with um someone told me that a girl that i was talking to said that they liked burberry so i was like well obviously if you get burberry the lady should just fall in your lap and um that was not the case <laughs> but um i don't know this is a tester so I actually get to see the top notes. The top notes, bergamot, lavender, thyme, and mint. Um, base notes, amber, tonka bean, and cedar. So let's spray. This is the first time that I've sprayed it in probably like seven years. By the way, these don't go bad. Don't believe the, the, the hype, the rumor. Oh gosh, that was that. Faithful or reliable. Gosh, I, don't, I didn't smell that at all. I think I'm nose blind. Gosh, I hate that. I'm trying to get it like over here, but I keep like going right in my eye. Um, yeah, I see why women like it because it's it's very floral. It's it hits you right up top with that lavender. Um, women like perfumes. They like perfumes on them. They like perfum perfumes on you. And that's what it is. It's kind of a perfume masquerading as a cologne, but yeah, I mean, every time that I sprayed this guy, I thought that I was a boss. <laughs> I was not. But um, it was my cologne, and it had been in the glove box of every car that I owned through my teen years and uh, still has a very special place in my heart. Would I wear it now? Probably not. Okay. Two more gifts. And if you've been with me for any length of time, any length of time, you'll know that 
that there is one designer that I hate. Hate's a strong word. That I dislike. And if you've been with me for any time, you'll know that that designer is Nautica. Totally mass-produced, unoriginal, just bleh of a scent. I just brought out one. But I have them all. It's not bad. I'm not, I'm not hating on this guy. Um, but it's so overpurchased, overused. There's just nothing that special about him. But it's not bad. But, you know, when you're younger, you gravitate towards these sport colognes. And, um blues colognes a spring summertime and and then as you you get older and, and mature a little bit you want a fragrance that's going to match you a little bit more in your maturity and it's just not nautica three years in a row nautica the original i got for christmas uh nautica that nautica blue that came in a big swervy one and then nautica voyage three years in a row never used them but my father loved them <laughs> so for somebody who um doesn't really know that much about colognes or and I'm, I'm not saying that there's not a lot of people who don't like it i'm sure there are i'm just not one of them okay one more that was a gift and this guy is kind of my dark horse. Do you recognize this? Any of you? I accuse it of being Argyle. I think it's like just kind of a weird plaid. This is Burberry Brit. Sometimes you have these happy accidents um i was running low on burberry this one i told my mother hey um you want to get me a, a gift for christmas get me burberry she didn't know the difference bought me burberry brit i opened it up what the heck is this it was a little bottle. That's the thing. That's the funny thing. Whenever people give you gifts for colognes, they always get you like the one ounce, right? <laughs> I don't blame them. They're expensive. I'll tell you what. I polished off Burberry Brit. I loved it. Um, whatever Burberry did that was light, that was perfumey, this guy is about as mature as mature can be. It hits you up front with like some smokiness, some flower. Yeah, some floral arrangements, but then it also comes in really quick with musk and uh, like a patchouli or um, some sort of a wood and the base and the performance of this guy. I think my skin likes it, you know, you'll see cologne um, perform different depending on your skin. And this guy, uh, my skin really enjoys it. Uh, it dries super well. Um, that sweetness from the opening notes and the middle notes, it instantly destroys and you're left with just a great smelling fragrance and I had to buy it. This is expensive. Holy cow, a hundred bucks for this bottle now. Is it worth it? Uh, maybe not. I will say though, would I wear it again? That'll be fun. Let me wait to the end and I'll give you that for each one. Would I wear it again? That'll be a fun one. Okay. Moving on. Heavily influenced as a teen, as a young cringy teen, um, was influenced by peers, um, in-laws, 
different people, they tell you, oh, have you heard of this cologne? Well, no, I haven't. Oh, it's the best. So naturally, in my young, pea-sized brain, I thought, okay, I guess it is. And when I was a teenager, there was literally nothing that was cooler than diesel. Let me tell you, if you are a millennial, you will remember the great affliction um, of affliction. I guess we'll say that. Uh, the shirt brand affliction UFC is the bad boys. Um, to this day, I have like 25 affliction shirts and I'm embarrassed to wear them. I'd so I don't. Uh, this is the same thing. This is the affliction shirt in a cologne. I remember shopping, um, like Black Friday shopping, and I looked over and I saw this guy, and he had two of these colognes under his arm, walk into the uh, checkout. And let me tell you, if a douchebag was suddenly turned into a human being, it was this guy. Leather jacket, bandana, glasses, like full circle, but back in the mid-2000s, oh buddy, let me tell you, this was off the hizzy, diesel for life. Now, this is kind of funny because I actually never could afford diesel. It was like 60 bucks. And to me, that was astronomical. That's amazing um, because nowadays people buy Creed and Baccarat and uh, Parfums de Marly and don't even blink an eye. You buy the new Yves Saint Laurent and spend $160. You buy Black Opium on Red, which is incredible perfume, but you're going to pay 150 bucks for the smallest bottle. But back then, it was the land of cheap fragrances. And this guy was an outlier because it wasn't that. It has this burlap little sack thing and just has a plain, plain Jane bottle and has diesel for life there. And uh, you'll see it in the unboxing video if you want to watch it. But I thought it was super like you know, badass, it's really not. It's actually a pretty tame fragrance. Um, right off the bat, you get like a super soapy, um, maybe some some bergamot or, or something fruity, maybe a little bit of like a mint. And then once it settles, it definitely settles into more of a woodsy um, kind of fragrance, but it's not super in your face douchebag, which is interesting. It's all about presentation, right? They present it as the Chris Angel mind freak affliction douchebag, um, but it's not. It's actually good. It just doesn't last long and it doesn't project well. But I'll tell you what, I thought this was the coolest thing, and um, this is literally the first time that diesel is in my collection and uh, happy to have it I think I think it's a good fragrance honestly okay All right. a large amount of um, my knowledge and fragrance came from my sister's uh, husband at the time he was a very minor collector. I look back on it now with my collection and I'm like, I accused him of being, you know, obsessed. I thought, I thought he was like an addict and uh, he only had like 10 <laughs> fragrances. But back when I was 16, 17, um, he kind of showed me his collection and sort of what was cool and 
that totally changed the game for me. And the first one that I remember very fondly is um, CK, Calvin Klein, right? Calvin Klein won. This is the original bottle that uh, he left behind, actually, when he moved out. Lived with us for a little while, uh, for a couple years. CK1, what else can I say? It's it's summer and springtime in a bottle. It's uh, Calvin Klein. Incredible. Fresh, soapy, super bright. Um, if the sun set over a cornfield uh, filled with opportunity was in a bottle, it would be CK1. It's, it's incredible. Floral, playful, fun. It's great. I'm. <laughs> it shows you. Um, I have a lot of these, and I uh, didn't even know I had this in my collection until I was getting ready to do another video. I saw it in the back. I said, "Is that like one of the best clones ever, just hiding back there?" And it was. I thought it was something else. I guess for a long time. Okay. The next one from his collection that I adored. There was actually two, but they don't make one of them anymore. Is uh, Hugo Boss, Boss in Motion. Couldn't find it. They don't make it new anymore. Um, the second one they do, and it's Guess. Guess. This was a release back before the chic, cool looking bottles were a thing. This was hip, this was like, you saw this and you were like, what the heck? It's a G and take the cap off. Isn't that cool? Like, are you kidding me? Surprisingly expensive. This is their green, uh, so their springtime fragrance. Um, and I just remember this cologne so fondly. Oh gosh, yes. Okay, here's my advice to you. Leave the Green Irish Tweed at home. Leave CK1 at home. Oh my gosh, and pick this guy up. Uh, seriously. This is probably the best cologne, and I'm not just saying this for nostalgia's sake. You can see like my first um, reaction in the unboxing video. When I smelled this for the first time, I was blown away. I did not remember it being this freaking good, and it is, it is that freaking good. If you have never tried this cologne, let me tell you something. It is good. It is good. What does it smell like? There is a a depth to it that I can't put my my finger on. It's perfectly blended. Right at the beginning, you get something, and you're like, oh, it's springtime, floral, fruity. But then it develops so quickly, and you have these rich notes like the um, ambergris or or something that's just earthy and it just, oh. Okay. Now, remember back before the niche fragrances and the Dior's of the world um, taking over everything before the Yves Saint Laurent. Back when I was growing up, Yves Saint Laurent was one fragrance and it was La Nuit de Long. That was it. Um, you didn't really hear about YSL. Now you have YSL and Dior as the entire market. Back then, who had the entire market was Calvin Klein. And you already saw a bit of Calvin Klein with the CK1. But this is the next one, Calvin Klein Obsession for Men used to get these 
sample packs go through a store and they would have these little like scratch offs you know like, like open it up or like a little sample uh, file and they used to send them to you in the mail they used to be a part of um i don't know how they got them to smell this way but like you scratch off something or peel something you could smell it on uh, like jc penny's catalogs and everyone knew calvin klein man and uh, obsession and eternity were two colognes that you could not avoid shocked absolutely stunned i went to an ulta just a few days ago and they had this on the shelf i think this came out in the 80s and the fact that it's still on the shelf incredible it's affordable i saw some cringe uh teen teenager teenager uh post on tiktok or something and he said obsession smells like cat urine it's like come on man uh, first off it's such a stupid thing to say if a cologne has been on the shelf for 30 plus years and people are buying it so it stays on the shelf clearly some people like it and no one's going around buying o2 cat urine so some people like it number two if i tell you that i don't like a cologne i'll tell you why it's just my personal preference I'm not going to go out and tell you that your cologne sucks and that it smells like cat urine because guess what? They don't. Unless there is a cologne out there mimicking cat urine, there's no cat urine fragrance. There's no reason to hate a particular fragrance. Just don't dissuade people from doing it. You know, I, I'll say this. If you like Nautica Voyage, go for it. I'll tell you why I don't. But I'm not going to hate on you. You know, if you like it, do it. Do what makes you happy. If you think gross colognes are, are good, go wear them. You know, that doesn't matter what I think or anybody else does. Obsession for men, though, is, is it's incredible. It's like super perfumey. Really stings the nose uh, when, you, when you first spray it. Alcohol content just really gets you. And that's another thing these colognes all these colognes back in the day were eau de toilettes eau de parfums and parfums that wasn't really a thing uh, it was in to an extent but everything was an edt you didn't even think about getting something that wasn't an edt now designers pump out three separate versions of one cologne so they don't have to be original and they can uh, get the success basically live off the success it's like a sequel you know keeping a movie series around long after it should have been gone um, and a good example of that is Aqua de Gio you know the Aqua de Gio's um, EDT was it this bestseller they didn't come out with the Eau de Parfum till last year and honestly, it's it's not that great. I have it. Um, you can see it in one of my videos. Um, obsession for men, incredible, flowery, floral. I can see why ladies would love this. And uh, I love it too. I think it's great. All right. This brings us to our last cologne. And this is right at the cutoff. I am ending my youth at my teen years. So my last signature scent. Aqua de Gio, Giorgio Armani, the Polar Home, original Aqua de Gio. My college scent. selling clone of all time when you spray it you get these aquatic notes these sea notes it smells like summer I think it has over 20 different notes in it 
fruitiness, beachiness, floral, woodiness as it dries. No collection is complete without Aqua Di Gio. They make some really killer clones. I remember back when this used to be 120 bucks for this bottle. Now they've chilled. They've calmed down on that. But there are some killer clones, and I made a video of one. Knock your socks off. All right. Let's do something fun. That's all the cologne. Let's go in, and I'll tell you right now if I would wear them or if I wouldn't wear them at this point in my life. If they're good enough or if it's something I regret. So we'll go and try to go in the order I went in before Michael Jordan. No, strong pass. Uh, it's great. And I remember it fondly, but it's a sports cologne. It's not evolved. It's like an Axe body spray. And that's not where I am in life right now. Blue Seduction. No, absolutely not. But it's a good fragrance. It's just perfumey, but in a cheap way. And I don't mean to say that's not a good fragrance. It is. Seduction in black. Maybe. Maybe. The um, tonality and the depth is very different than his brother. Uh, so, possibly. Noir. I would not wear it, but I spray my bathroom and my bathroom curtains with it and it's phenomenal and I love the scent but I wouldn't want it on me it's I don't know just not it's not there there's no wow to it in my opinion moving right along David off nope Too potent, um, too much alcohol content, just not at all. Not at all. Not a voyage, no, but it's good. I do the same thing with a noir spray the bathroom, spray the shower curtain, spray the bedroom even. David Beckham Instinct, maybe. Reminds me of playing sports. So if I were to go to the gym or uh, play a sport and pick up game or something, yeah, I would for sure. And uh, very affordable as well, which is always something you got to keep in mind. Burberry. Yes, but under very limited circumstances. This has always been my emergency cologne ever since I transitioned away from it. And that's why it was in my glove box. Oh, I forgot to spray a cologne. Thank goodness I got this, open it up, boom, boom, boom. Or if your cologne is dried up and you need a freshen, a refreshener, I'd still do the same thing. It's a good cologne, it's a good cologne. Burberry Brit. I have uh, just a few days ago. I used this and went out of the house with it for a meeting. I love it. I absolutely love this cologne. It's phenomenal. It's um, totally by accident. I got that cologne and it's incredible. It's a really good cologne. CK. Uh, CK1 yes but again in limited circumstances um, but yeah it's a good strong fragrance for springtime and summer diesel I used it as a kick around the house cologne the other day and it doesn't stay for long, but I liked it. Um, 
maybe I feel like if I were to wear it out too people might be like is that diesel because like it was pretty popular back in the day and I think that'd be cool like to have that as a as a conversation starter so yeah obsession ah uh, again it have to be a specific occasion I do not wear colognes like this they're very feminine uh, I just don't wear colognes like this but they're good enough it's good enough to still be worn absolutely it's just not for me guess 100 percent is rich it's luxurious it smells like a designer cologne um, in a good way in a way that's well blended it smells expensive and i love it i love it aqua de geo i'm gonna give this a no just for the fact that after wearing this for years i just don't want to wear it anymore but I think it's a great cologne, and actually, I, I do wear its older brother, um, Profuomo, which is discontinued, so I use it, special occasions, but if I'm going to use this, I use the $8 cologne, which smells just like it, or I will use Profuomo, because Profuomo is everything this is, plus a lot more, so that's it that's all i got um gosh i love these colognes um cost me like 400 bucks <laughs> to go back and buy these colognes that aren't even relevant anymore um but great to have in the collection great to remember these things i remember them very fondly um and you know, the scent is one of our, our senses that has the ability to unlock memories and it just takes me, takes me down memory lane going with these things. So, do you have any of these colognes? Did you ever have any of these colognes? And uh, what do you think? Let me know. If you like this video, please do uh, drop a comment and uh, like it. And until next time.